brothers and sisters, he is risen. It's Easter Sunday for me. It's um, Easter Monday for you if you're on the Patreon. It's Easter Thursday is not really a thing if you're waiting for the normal release. It's even later than that if you're listening to this later on, so I'll stop the bit because it's not funny anymore. Before we get started, speaking of Patreon, we have a Patreon. It's £1. You get early access to the episodes. You get early access to the merch. Patreon.com forward slash the downbeat is the number one way to support the podcast. Really appreciate you if you could check it out. Speaking of merch, we've also got merch, www.thedownbe.at. It's done. I've sorted out two stores, UK store, US store, same stuff. Ships locally, cheap shipping. Guess what? Bad for you, kind of good for me. Um, it went really well and there's not that much stock left, but anything that is left, really appreciate you checking that out as well. www.thedownbe.at, so it spells downbeat. Thank you. I also want to tell you about those annoying magnolia walls that you've got in your flat or house and they just look rubbish. And when everyone comes in, they look at your wall and go, that's horrible. Um, you can change that, right, with a little thing called a display. It's a metal poster. But Craig, I don't know how to mount things to the wall. Guess what? You know how a magnet works? No, no one does. But you know they're well easy? Displays mount on the wall with a magnet. There's no mess. You attach the magnet to the protective leaf. Slap that up on the wall and away you go. You can have anything. You can have your favourite movies, bands, games, sports teams, anything you can think of. The best thing about them, if you don't like that thing anymore, take it off the wall, replace it with another one. No mess. Let's say you go see Dune 2. Let's say you don't see Dune 2. You actually just buy a Dune 2 display, put it on the wall. Then you go watch the movie and you're like, actually, that's a bit crap. Just change it out. What are you going to put there instead? You could put a lovely wa waifu. Is that how you say that? I haven't got one of those in my bathroom. Displate.com. The code is downbeat. You get 22% off one to two displates or 33% off three or more. Displate.com. The code is downbeat. My guests on the downbeat podcast this week are Brian and Chris of the band Currents. Big brains on these two, absolutely massive brains, vocals, riffs, everything. We talk about the history of their band, talk about writing songs. We have a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. Talk about Nando's, Two Truths and a Lie. It's all in there. It's a good episode. Just watch the whole thing, would you? And then I went to go see them in Glasgow and they absolutely smashed it. Unbelievable live band, unbelievable musicians and dudes. It's current on the Downbeat Podcast. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's always so weird doing it because we've been talking, we say hello, and then cameras roll and I have to go, boom, hello, you're back. You We're back. You brought a friend. Brought my friend Brian. Brian, vocalist. Yes, I am here. Are you doing both vocals? Yes. That's the, well, I mean, we're going straight in on podcast shit. Thanks for coming, number one. Thanks for coming back. Hell yeah. Uh, that's fucking hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sucks sometimes, but it's mostly fun. Because normally I'll ask a vocalist and they'll go, I'm on vocal rest. Especially a Sing Sing. You're a mm -hmm. Sing Sing. Mr. Sing Sing, yes. No vocal rest? No, no. I I try sometimes uh, if I'm really feel like I need it, like the beginning of the tour, first few days, definitely like to do it. And then once things kind of settle for me and I get the, the balance going, I can kind of just do whatever. I can stay up late and have a few beers and really? yeah, yeah. But sometimes he knows when he needs it. I'll know like middle of a tour, I'll like say something to him and he'll just be like, or he'll be like, yeah, I don't know how like, to say uh, it. He's, he's on vocal rest. How long does it take to rest it? Rule of thumb that I have heard is like good like couple hours. If you can, the more the better. I think it's like eight hours is like great. Uh, but if it's a little less, you know, you just do what you can. I want to stop talking about it because the minute you said it, I was like, I'm going to fuck him with this podcast now. You just talk. <laughs> two hours is great. Like, We're about to talk for about two hours. So uh, maybe we won't do that. How's your tour? Great. Oh, yeah, it's awesome. Where? What day are we on? Six. Day six? I think so. We did three German, two UK, and today's the third UK. 
How how many times has Currents been to the UK? I want to say f- this is our fifth time. Is it? Yeah, because 2017 was May I Fit for King. It is. Then Never oh, Say goodness. Die, right? Yeah. August Burns Red. Uh, and then Never Say Die again. Yeah. And it would have been more. COVID canceled, I think, three <laughs> different tours. No. Uh, it was, yeah, there was a... There Polaris was a- Alpha Wolf. Was gonna be one. Oh my god, that's a tour. There I was know. a different Polaris Amir Never Say Die, and then if there was another one, I can't remember what it was. It might have been two iterations of Never Say Die that yeah. got canceled, and then the third third time is the charm. So that one worked out. The last Never Say Die worked out, or yes. or this yes. this tour right here. So you've, both, you've been back since COVID. Yes. yes, the last Never Say Die was our post COVID experience here who headlined that after the burial and suicide silence now you're bigger than both bands your words well you've got some what's your london on this one we're just doing o2 islington it did sell out a while back but you know seeing you do roundhouse i'm like ah we still have a ways to go i mean i don't know how we fucking did that (laughs) (laughs) oh my god periphery just did it i saw uh there just did it and sold it out so much how long ago did you sell out it's a reason it isn't as what 800 something like that i think so 800 we sold to 800 yeah uh how long ago did it sell out i think it'll have ended up selling out a month ish before so it was like i'm always like upgrade 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 and then they're like ah Maybe not. The, the upgrade thing is a weird thing because... It is. Because sometimes you think it's a good idea and then they're like, no, it's not. And then sometimes you don't think you can upgrade and they're like, oh, we can upgrade. Yeah. So we're never on the same page. There's, we had that in Glasgow, actually. We did uh, the garage and it was, it was an eight, 750, I think, and we couldn't upgrade. And the next upgrade was like two and a half thousand. So we're not going to fucking do that. Mm-hmm. So we couldn't do it. And London, you got that weird thing where it's like you got 800... And then you've got 1,200, which is fine. But if that venue, those two venues aren't available, you have Roundhouse. <laughs> I think uh, there's, there's barely anything in between. Well, there's the, the 2,200. I don't remember the name. Uh, I think it might be Shepherd's Bush. Shepherd's Bush Empire. I think it was like an O2 something. O2 is a Shepherd's Bush. I oh, think okay, that's okay. 2 2. Um, and, there are, and there's uh, Forum. Okay. Kenwich Town Forum. But. Mm. that's what i was, i think that's what i was thinking venue sucks no offense <laughs> <laughs> but like the balcony the balcony is like not fun mm-hmm. and a lot of the tickets are the balcony and then they just end up not selling yeah but when we did brown it wasn't like it didn't sell out but it was like two five i think out of three so it's like yeah way way better than yeah that's sweet though what it was gonna do but that, that that's the jump we made islington to roundhouse i think you got that you got Sing been, Sing. We don't even have Sing Sing. Yeah, yeah. It would have been nice to do electric ballroom. Yeah. I felt like we were, that was like a talk, but it didn't end up happening. Was it Was it busy? No, I think it was available. I think they wanted it to sell out like two or three months in advance Yeah, cause um, it, to do it. They upgraded it. It used to be, I think it used to be 1100 and now it's 14. Is uh, Brixton and Ballroom the same venue? Because I keep seeing Brixton on posters now and I'm like, no, it's so not the there's same. Now th- there's three. So you've got Brixton Academy, which is 5,000. Oh, no. Ele- Brixton, called- Brixton uh- Electric is a different venue. Okay. Kind of sick, though. That's 1,400. Mm. And then Electric Ballroom. Yeah, that's a nice size. Isn't yeah. It? Give yeah. Me a little, Ideal. Give me a little 14. Have you sound checked already today? Our sound guy, Nolan, is great and just does virtuals every day. You don't even step on the stage. So we might change up the set a little bit and we're going to like test out like MIDI and lights and audio when we do that to make sure it works. But yeah, day one, we made sure all our stuff worked after being off the plane. But after that, um, we all feel... We're all overconfident. We're like, we don't need to. That's <laughs> fucking sick, though. Even the drummer. What's his name, Matt? Yeah, yeah. He, he's very good about warming up every day with a pad and a kick pedal. So yeah. he's still putting in work, even if he's you know not on stage. I'm intrigued with this because we've, we've always had sound guys that like, they play digital bath. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, of course. Right. They play mm, for a bit and then they play digital bath. And then they play last night's set, which I guess is the virtual check. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then we always go on stage, and part of me has seen it. Other bands doing it. I'm like, how yeah. sick would it be? But I would be scared. No, our sound guy is never doing Deftones or Gojira. He's doing 
I don't even know what those songs are called. Yeah, he's got his own. He's got his own little yeah. selection going on. He's got on. like a super metal one, a super funky one. What's his name, Nolan? Yes. Mm -hmm. The name rings a bell, but I'm thinking of Nolan from Kubla Khan, and then I'm thinking of Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Maybe I, maybe I know him. And there's another sound Bad guy, Nolan, we took that uh, mixed spite. Um, and, I, and he works in a Santa Ana. He's great, too. But there's more Nolans every day. You don't get you don't get nervous going on stage with no sound check. No, you guys are fucking hard as nails. <laughs> I would I would freak out. I don't know. It's we we rehearse so much. Um, I mean, everybody rehearses on their own time, and then um, I mean, when we were doing our U.S. tour, we would sound check uh, every day, mostly because I mean, we would do a VIP, and then we would have like the you know the VI people come in, and we do the yeah. sound check then. Yeah, and sit on the stage. It was and more chat, for them uh, than for us. Also, you get paid. <laughs> <laughs> kind of sick. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, yeah, so we, I don't know, we, we feel okay doing it. And it also saves time for the other bands and everything. It's like, you know, if we're up there doing whatever, like that's time everybody else could spend just getting everything together, give everybody a chance to have a day. That's very nice of you. Here's the real, the real test of if you're nice. Are you striking? So today, <laughs> today, today we are. Yes. Oh, you are today. Today we are because have you been to? The, I've never, I've never been to Slay. No, I haven't either. Uh, Is it small? Oh, mm, I think stages. it's like higher capacity than Cat House, but smaller stage. So, is it got a load in as bad as Cat House though? I would say Cat House is even worse, but this load-in is still the worst of the tour so I far. I think Cat House is the worst load-in on earth. It was the day you came to see us last year. It was icy and slippery, and we were doing those outside stairs because the, the inside stairs were being used for, like, another show. People were in line for another show. Outside stairs at the fucking Cat House. That were icy. So it was freezing. The stairs were icy. So you're carrying giant, heavy cases down slippery, icy stairs. And, and then at the bottom, oh. there's drunk homeless people waiting for you to yell at you for no reason. Mm. It's pretty sweet. Have yeah. you got text? This, we're just taking out LD, front of house, TM, Nolan, and uh, photo slash merch slash video. That's a fucking, you got your money's worth there. That's yes. lovely. That's yes. what we do. We get little Gabe come along. Yep. Excuse me, mate. Could you do everything? <laughs> <laughs> got the just, unit. Could you yeah. just do everything? Is everyone on a bus? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are sharing the red bus. Which are oh, one of the wide Vidas. It's the, you know, the road through night liner. Oh, yeah. That's not bad. Yeah, it's nah, not bad at all. Yeah. It's full of merch boxes right now, but... Inside. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Six dude. days into tour, baby. <laughs> we've, never, we've never had this issue before, but yeah, the trailer... Wait, just have is, too much. Who, who is it? Throw him under the bus. Who, who else is on the tour? Who's taking up all the fucking space? <sighs> so it's, it's our fault, kind of. It's uh, we're, Yeah, we're not going to blame anyone, but being as an ocean, Ocean's 8 Alaska and Sentinels, all the supports are sharing a drum kit, so can't blame them there. They're all sharing a kit? Nice. Yeah. So, so we have our own. Yeah, it's fucking you. That's yeah. fine. It's your, it's your head yeah, on. Yeah, our lights, our lights take up a little bit of space, but I mean, everyone has a good amount of merch. Uh yeah, I'd, lo I'd love to blame someone, but Damn I think man. we can all share the blame. We're always going to get some juice there. Yeah. You've got being as an ocean and Ocean's 8 Alaska. Indeed. Yes. All the oceans. Yes. Good yeah. bands, though. Great bands. Yes, great bands. You mentioned lights. Is this your first time with like a big light package? We had it in the US um, a couple times, but this is our first time overseas with our own light package. Who programmed it? Our friend Kevin, who uh, has always done our programming. Since day one. One reason for asking, we just did a tour. That one there, like you can't play Roundhouse without fucking lights. So yeah. we, that was our first tour with bringing a light package and not just like, let's just play this guy to press buttons in time. And I like now I don't think I can ever do it without it. Like the minute you get, yeah. the minute you, let, let's see if you did it because you've got a couple of moments like this. you got a lot of cool guitar shit, right? Try to. You know, you know I like you, right? But have you matched lights to funny guitar funny like crazy guitar noises like basically have you stolen the sugar thing because we did oh 100 percent, 100 percent. if there's a pattern on the kick which you know i'm, I'm writing the kick drum parts 99 percent of them and to you know match the guitar to a degree unless it sounds too rigid 
what sounds too rigid is up to the uh, imagination, of course. But no um, yeah, a lot of matching with lights, kick, guitar stabs, you know. Wait, have you got the, for the bends? We stole that off with sugar so hard. <laughs> I mean, like when it just goes, boom, stole Sick. it. Sick. Stealing that. It costs us quite a lot though. You needed like some special light thing to do it. I don't know what it, what it is. Yeah, I don't know, but keep that in mind. Yeah, steal that. It's the, it's the coolest thing I've ever well, seen. Well, like a special bulb? I don't know. Like like, or like the way. It's probably the movers. Yeah. Because we mm. have, you know, the poles and the movers are on top and then they would just vertically go. Yeah. I can't remember what song it was. I was it was a Meshuggah song, obviously. All of the songs have fucking yeah. bends. But it was like every single bend, they had these two lights that just went with the bend. And we were like, steal that. Yeah. Thanks very much. I know Fifer and Autopsy probably got that too then. I think, oh yeah. <laughs> 100%. Will and Tom just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> use this. I th I'm fairly sure they're, gonna, they're using our guy now as well. Yeah. I like the, I like the incestuous nature of metal. Yeah, I didn't mean um, brother sister. I meant more like. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I, I, didn't like, e I didn't either. I meant more like step engineer. <laughs> 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 Fucking terrible! Absolutely yeah, terrible. Everyone what? knows everyone. What are you doing, step engineer? Anyway, enough about my search history, which isn't that. Come on, that's fucking that's ridiculous. Um, speaking of incest. <laughs> Is there any, ever any clashes between Shadow of Intent and Currents and like... I have a question about that. Well, you Ooh. have a question. Oh, okay. Not personally. Someone's uh, chimed in. Have they? On our little... Oh, we got a little... A, a phone in. Hello. We got a phone in. Get them on. Fuck yeah. This is Adam. How do you know the difference between a Shadow of Intent riff and a Currents riff? They're both sick, but how do you have that distinction between the two? Thanks. Thanks, Adam. That was his name, right? That was yep. his name, yeah. Well, usually, you know, my studio's in my house. Mm -hmm. I'll sit down and I'm like, what am I going to write now? And usually I just have it already set on what I want to do. Like um, what, what? As in which band? Yeah. And yeah, I don't think I've ever like, in, you know, started with one band and been like, oh, this would be better for the other one. Um, it just doesn't really work that way for me. Here's something I've noticed. Because this was on my list of things to talk about. Mm -hmm. But Adam stole my thunder. Thanks, Adam. Um, do you think that it's as, as a byproduct of the way current sounds now that there is less breakdowny stuff in Shadow of Intent? Because the current's breakdowns are very, very, very sick. But you could put them in a Shadow of Intent song. I know what the guy's saying, like, and it would sound fucking sick. Do you have like, have you, is it been a conscious decision or has it just happened that? It was a conscious decision, but we're also, I'm less worried about that now. And I am starting to bring in like lower tuned shadow intense stuff that we would never do ever. Um, just because I've gotten kind of over um, not having it. I've done it for four albums yeah. and it's hard to, it's a weird creative battle where you're like, you put yourself in boxes and you're like, oh, I can't do this because I'm already doing this recurrence. But now I'm like, I don't have to do it the exact same way, but I kind of want to escape the box a little just because I think I can and I think it would benefit the song more. Because I don't think I could, I could, I, Stray couldn't write a song without a breakdown. Like yeah. the way we write is, okay, I've kind of got an intro. It's like, oh, sick. We're like half the way there. Okay, what else do we need? Like we need a verse, a chorus, and a breakdown. That's it. But if you took oh, breakdown yeah. away from me. Yeah. The fuck? I mean, I guess you got orchestra. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people have a expectation from Shadow Intense Vocalist to do certain things. And musically, if it doesn't lend itself to those types of things, then that core demographic of fans um, might not get what they want want as much. So are finding- you, Are you annoyed about this? This seems like you're hiding an annoyance at the core demographic. <laughs> um, get it out, get it. This, yeah, is therapy. No. this is therapy. I mean, everyone wants, I should just be able to do whatever I want and everyone should love it. Yep. That's what every artist wants. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna, I'm too, 
toxic positivity. I would never be annoyed at our fans. I actually um, see it in your fucking eyes. No, you are annoyed. <laughs> no. Um, what? Are, right, okay, put it this way. What do they expect from a Shadow of Intent song, and what do they expect from a current song? As far as I know, what they expect from both, they want some riffs. They want some riffs that are cool. They just expect they want from some Wiseman to be. Some, yeah, they honest. want some breakdowns that are cool. They want for Shadow of Intent. They want um, stank face vocals. Is that what they would call it? I don't, I don't know. know. I don't they know. They want they want vocals that are uh, the big gurgle. They want a little. They want a variety. We have a song where the vocalist does like a bunch of different vocal styles within a few seconds, and they're like, and he and he's actually not about that. Uh, some people call it vocal acrobatics, and you know he doesn't really, you know, want to do that just because people tell him to. He wants to do what he wants to do, and that's what every artist wants. I think is to follow what they want to do but um and then for currents they want you know he, he can just do all sorts of stuff he can sing and scream and yeah, do sure. both high and low so but do they what i'm trying to compare it to is like yeah. you know like architects have to do a blare have you got anything along those lines in either song where people just like oh, i don't like it unless it's got that because in my head like every current song has a fucking insane breakdown in it i feel like a lot of it's like the choruses have been kind of a big thing yeah in the in the more recent times i guess yes uh the breakdown's always good i feel like people like when the lyrics are sad um so i feel like any combination of those things some uh you know, some sad lyrics, some breakdowns, some some big choruses. That's kind of the uh, that's kind of the realm. I feel like. I think that's why I like it. Yeah. Who writes the lyrics? That's me. You were about to say something, and then I'm going to attack you with that. I th I think just a closing thought is people might also not know what they want until they hear it, and it's like, oh, I didn't know I needed that until I heard it. So it's not that they want something specific, but if they don't get, um those types of vocals and rhythmic breakdowns or yeah. patterns. Um, nice. They might, some, some fans might feel like they didn't get what they wanted because the song they liked had more of that stuff. I do find, no, I can say it, you can't, but it is insufferable in metalcore when the, the <laughs> he laughed, he fucking thinks it as well. Um, the entitlement with the song. You didn't do exactly the same song again, guys. You didn't do exactly the same song. I'm so annoyed. It annoys the absolute fuck out of me. But it's like, there's fucking, there's a million bands. Just listen to all the fucking bands. Right, back in the olden days, you had a guitar, right? Little strings, bing, plong, plong. There was like two songs. Kumbaya was one of them. A Beatles song was the other one. I can't remember. But basically now you don't have to do that anymore because the lovely people at Neural DSP have created plugins. So you can just plug that guitar straight into your computer and you can sound like Gojira. You can sound like Tim Henson, Tom Morello. Let's say you are a little bit dimmer than the rest of us and your strings are thicker and you perhaps only have four of them. Yes, that's right, you're a bassist. Well, guess what? You can get bone crushing. I said bone crushing bass tones with the Dark Glass Ultra Pack. Just that slapping low end. I want, really want to say slap at the bass, but I'm not going to do it. NeuralDSP.com. Use the code DOWNBEAT. You can get 30% off anything I mentioned, any plugin. 30% off. Just go. Make your tone sound good. You like Nolly? You can sound like Nolly. I love Nolly. NeuralDSP.com. The code is DOWNBEAT. Lyrics. Oh, yeah. You. That sounded offensive. Chris. I'd like to say that I think I can see, and I'm obviously been chatting you, chatting with you before. You are like a fucking genius, right? But I can see it when you're talking. You've got all the plans with the music. You've got everything out, and you care about the fans. I can see it while you're talking. It's really, really, fun. it's really cool to see, and you care about making music that they want. And I can see, I can sense maybe there is a battle in your head sometimes. Music I want to make, music the fans want, but you're managing to find the middle ground between the two. For Currents lately, it's been super easy. 
it feels like more now more than ever what we want and what the fans want is like i i think right comes very naturally more than yeah. it ever has um which is awesome and shadow and ten i think there's there's more of a, a battle there at the moment but we're you know we feel good about the new stuff but if we, that makes sense but you're not here for them today and we're gonna do yeah. currents we, this is yeah, a current podcast currents, today yeah. brian <laughs> Why, Hi. why are you so sad, bro? <laughs> I don't know, dude. I don't know. I feel like, yeah, that's kind of where a lot of it goes, right? But um, I really like, so talking about Chris's songwriting and all that, it's like, I feel like whether there's a struggle or not, Chris writes a lot of different kind of things. So even if you haven't heard it yet, there are things that he's done that, you wouldn't expect from either band, mm. you know, and it ends up, like it ends up in the Dropbox no matter what. And then basically the way that Currents works is Chris will send over whatever he's got and then I will take, uh, you know, just how however long it takes to just put lyrics, melodies, the patterns, whatever, like all over as much as I can uh, until it's time to, you know, hit the studio and then whatever is done and like polished by that point is pretty much what happens. Um, there will be times where it's like, hey, I really want something on this song. And then there's more of an effort made to, to get that done, even mm. if it wasn't on like my, my radar necessarily. Yeah. But um, yeah, I'm really just trying to capture whatever I feel like is just the vibe. And a lot of times it kind of just goes there. So I would I would put the same question to him maybe because I feel like that's where a lot of the songs go. And I don't know. I, I feel like the, uh, the emotional self deprecating stuff is really easy to, to draw on at least for me. So it's really easy to listen to as an emotionally unstable self deprecating person as well. I can't, I can't handle, I can do two types of lyrics, depressing and fantasy. Mm. That's it. I oh, can't yeah. do like had a really fucking good day today. <laughs> like, you know, like a fucking like a pop song about like whatever. I need to either be depressed or I need to be I'm listening to a horror movie or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, something something wild, something out there. That's kind of where I, I kind of feel the same way, where it's like if I can't draw on something like in my own life, uh or you know, if I, I'm having trouble, I will kind of fall back on maybe the fantasy aspect of things and just be like let's make a story of some kind yeah. and maybe I don't really know what exactly is going on, but it, it gets the, uh, it gets the pen to paper and, and you can kind of like be, you can kind of make this little world of sorts. And then as that world grows, it, it kind of what inspires like the cover arts and things like that. It's just trying to like, if I can't come up with something that is like applicable to like something that's going on with me, I'll just try to dig into the imagination a little yeah. bit. You talk to me about this Dropbox. Are they, full songs i love to ask people like you actually explained a lot of it there but like the writing process obviously i know you're fucking mr sat at the computer making almost everything but like does it go in the dropbox for you to do vocals as a completely finished song or is it riffs breakdown it's mostly completely finished songs but there's also songs that are sort of completely finished but i I know this part's really a placeholder. I'm going to change this later. There are some riffs I upload for some reason just so I can be like, maybe I'll finish this one day. But I don't think you would ever put vocals on a song that's not like in the three plus minute range, except for Never There. There's one song on our second album where it's like, oh, this isn't finished yet. It's, I only got to like two minutes. And you're like, oh, no, it's it's good. This is the album intro. I'm like, oh. Yeah, Perfect. he'll just send this like obscure, like atmospheric, like almost interlude sounding thing. And I'll just be like, oh, that is that I am just going all over that, you know, because nice. that is fun for me because it's just open and, you know, you don't have to like worry about how this one vocal idea or this line is going to fit over this riff or, um, you know, how you're going to make this line fit. It's just just canvas. Did you study like music or anything like where did, where did the singing come from okay i don't know this might mess with another segment that we were talking about doing 
Oh, no. I, yes. But I guess I can... All right. Basically... This is, this is my life, bro. I, I have questions, and there's a fucking guy that already has the question. Like, just do it. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It, it messes with me more than it probably messes with anybody else. But I didn't sing in a band ever until Currents. Oh, that's, um, a that's a tr tr two truths of a lie. Got it. <laughs> Got it. Anyway, carry on. Yes, precisely. So, um... <laughs> we well, like, you just fucking sang at home. Uh, yeah, just kind of sang around at home, whatever. Like, I, I like bands that sang and, and, and all that, but I never really thought, like... So, my upbringing sort of was like, uh, you know, I always liked music, and I always knew, like, ever since seeing, like, Live in Texas, that Linkin Park DVD, I was like, oh, I want to be like Mike Shinoda. I want to be up there being like, oh, bounce, whatever. Like, getting yeah, people yeah. hyped up and... Um, you know, but then it was like, what do I do? Do I play drums? Do I play guitar? Hated both. Um, you know, and then just... For whatever reason, I I'd, like as I found more bands that screamed, I was like, okay, that seems like something maybe I can learn to do because this guy's singing at the same time. He can't like he can't be shredding himself completely. Like mm. there has to be something to it to be able to do both. And then I'm like, okay, I got to learn how to do this. And I just got so tunnel vision, like learning how to like you know do screamed vocals. And how did you, uh, how did you learn though? I don't know uh, how this shit gets learned. So it's like thirteen or fourteen. Um, and just obviously just, you start just by going, ah, and then you're like, okay, who, that's not who, how it works. Who taught you? Who taught you this? You're just sat at home doing it. I just, it, it's someone's like, Hey, go to this, what this, there's this website called YouTube and people just put videos on there and, and love like, YouTube. Oh, cool. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's ever heard of it, but, um, at the time it was like a pretty big deal. And I would go on there and it was like how to scream. And then there's like this little kid with like a fringe. And oh, he's like, this, this is, is how you scream. This is and he's, golden years. Yeah. And he's like, oh, yeah, you go like this. You go. Oh, and then you you drink orange juice and, and you eat a Snickers bar. And then you go. Oh, and, you know, um, and then you're like, OK, that advice is terrible. Um, that doesn't work for Next me at all. Video. Next video. And then you keep going. Then you find Melissa Cross and you're like, OK, this this ha, person. Ha. Hey, hey. Zoo, zoo. <laughs> sorry <laughs> i'm like th but then you see randy blythe and you see keith buckley and you see like all these dudes and you're like okay th th this seems more like the lane that i should be in yeah and then you know but can't afford it so you just find as many youtube videos as you can anybody that's like seen it and then they talk about it whatever learn and then um i think by the time i was like 15 like like two years um, I started being like, okay, I can actually do like stuff. I can like, it doesn't hurt. And I can just go like, blah, blah, blah. And you know, then it just grows from there. And then how did you end up in Currents? Uh, how old are you? There's a, big, there's a big gap here. So I'm 29 now. Okay. Yeah. So there is a big gap. When, yeah. when did you join? 2015? 2015. Yeah. For my fucking podcaster. Boom. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> right. 2015. Let's do the maths. What's that? Nine years ago. 29 now. What did you do for six years? <laughs> uh, six years, I just bounced around the local scene a little bit, you know, go to shows. And, but did um, you have a local band? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this is your first real band. Yes. I, I played shows with uh, two of the bands. It kind of it started as one, and then it kind of melded into a different one. And those were the two bands that played shows. Our guitar player was like a promoter in the area. He was like booking shows and stuff. He would just throw us on his shows, basically. Yeah. Um, you know, as, as you do. And so we would just kind of do that. We met Currents uh, in that scene. They were always, Currents was always just the biggest local band. They were always the the headline band on the show. And if they weren't the headline band on the show, they were the band that went right before the uh, national touring act that where was coming is the, in. Where is the local scene that we're talking about right now? This is Connecticut. So this is like, uh, uh, kind of like, there was, there was a few different, it's a very small state. What, what, right? what, Webster Hall, is that in Connecticut? Webster Theater. Webster and Theater. Webster, Webster Hall. Hall is in New York. Yes. yes. Got it. Um, I actually had a friend make that mistake. He wanted to see us at the Webster. He drove to Webster Hall. Wow. And I was like, you are just, you, you yeah, are just losing that. today. Webster Theater so. is that little. Right. So there's, yeah, there's the underground, uh, yep. which is what? That's like 350. Yep. Right. And then there's the main room, which is, uh, I don't know why I'm yeah. blanking it's right the one now. Like, 1300, yeah. It's the yeah. one that's on the corner. 
Yeah, it's on a corner. Yeah, I know. I know the one. I've been there. I don't think. I think maybe did a big room of architects, small room stray. Hmm. It is a. Uh, it is a wonderful place. It is uh, you know in a great area. Um, which I, we could be playing two truths and a lie right now. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. But, uh, <laughs> I walked to a gym up the road uh, on that day and it was pretty fucking rough. <laughs> yes, yes. There is no food anywhere. Um, there's it's not sweet. much to do, but I have seen some of the... My, I, I saw my first concert, like my first like show show there. Uh, I saw countless shows there, played countless shows there. Legendary place. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is pretty much the venue as far as like Connecticut goes. Anything else is just dead and gone or it's big. I mean, there's College Street, which is fantastic. Uh, it's Toad's Place, another legendary place. I've been there. Yeah. Um, so, what, so you know you know Currents from the local scene and then at what point are you in the band at that point? Yes. You've had so many fucking lineup changes. Yes. Yes. Yes, we have. All, all the best bands have really. Yeah. So look at fucking Counterparts. Look at us. Not um, anymore. Everybody, yeah. it's been pretty locked in for the last what, like four or five years. I want to say, years now, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty locked in. So, at what point do you poach him? What happened there? You know, our vocalist at the time was just kind of less into the idea of being, you know, going for it, mm. um, going the distance than the rest of the people in the band at the time. So, came to like mutual agreement. Maybe we get someone else and. I was a fan of his band already. Um, what was the name of The Tale of My Defeat. They had a four-song EP. Nice. <laughs> right? And I was like, wow, this is the most pro-sounding metalcore band in the whole area, other than Currents, <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> like, and then he posted a Northlane audition. Um, oh, wow. You know, yeah. the, the two songs. It, it got posted, what, the day before they picked Marcus or something? Yeah, great. Funny story. So, yeah, like, I was in, I was doing whatever, uh, playing in, you know, my local band. That band uh, stopped because we had a bad show. And we had an argument. We broke up, of course. Nice. Um, you know, but, yeah, shout out to All My Defeat. That was a, that was a good time. But, um, yeah, kind of bounced around, did a few different things, tried to figure out what I was going to do, what the move was going to be. Um, you know, I talked to a bunch of different people. Eventually, I kind of just, you know, I was working at a Spencer's in in the mall, just Fuck hanging yeah. out. And I was I'm like, there. I can we actually had three, three mini bands together, three bands that never played a show. Yes, we really? had tried to yeah. do a few things. Because I had a band that just stopped around the same time as his band. So we had three failed attempts at making something happen. There was a a cover band doing like rock bar covers or hopefully become a wedding band someday that didn't work. What age were you at, at this point? So I was a senior in college, so I was like 21-ish. What were you playing in this wedding band? I used to do a wedding band. I was, I was, guitar Sick. we never got to play a show, but he was going to sing. I was going to play guitar. Um, we we're going to do something called Procession, which had one of the guys from the Tale of My Defeat in it, the promoter guy. And what genre, what genre? This was deathcore, heavy metalcore, beat down. Oh, and then there was it. a yes. project from the old guitar player of Currents. One of the founders of Currents started a new band, but then he ended up joining a different band. Um, mm. So, but, you know, we, we tried to take each other to wherever we were going to go next. And then I ended up in Currents. And Just as like mutual fans of each other's work. Yeah. Yes. You know, yeah. if this guy's a fan of you, then you're fucking good. Yeah, it, it was brain. like, yes, big brain, <laughs> big brain man. Um, Huge. The, one of the biggest brains that's ever been in that chair, to be mm, honest. Mm. Hell yeah. Yes, indeed. Yeah, we like, yeah, it's, I, I'm, my two truths and a lie has been eliminated. <laughs> so, but, so we might as well, we might as well just like, yeah, I was in, I had, I was in five bands before Currents um, of varying degrees. I think two of them. I would say estimate were like a potential pro project with Chris. One, um, the the reason we decided to stick together was like I had left or my other band broke up and then um, I was going to start another band with a former uh, current guitar player 
Uh, it's all very convoluted. Yeah, I don't want to keep saying incest, but <laughs> well, yeah, literally, that's it's it's some incest. God knows I, I guess it's the theme of the podcast. It is. Um, but <laughs> if I was one of those podcasts that has like the titles, this would just be called Incest with Currents. But I'm not going to do that because I get demonetized. Carry on. Well, I'm sorry. Connecticut music scene, same exact way as the. I guess the bigger fishbowl yeah. um, is everybody kind of knows each other. And if you know, so like well, we're, former guitar player of currents wants to form a new band, pulls me in. It was going to be a similar situation. He's going to write the songs and write the vocals, whatever. We make some demos. He's go, he goes, Hey, I want to pull this Chris Wiseman guy. And do you know him? I'm like, yes. Um, pulls him in, get some things going. This guy joins another band and he's basically like, Hey, I joined this band. Uh, they're getting signed. They're going to tour. They got management. Um, yeah, this is pretty much just, I'm going to drop this for now. Uh, so sorry, but good luck guys. And we were bummed obviously. Um, and we kind of made the decision then and there of like, all right, wherever you go, I'm going to go. We're going to, we're going to try to get out of here. You know what I mean? And, uh, he ends up joining currents. Um, I had kind of tried to bounce around with like a few other people, lose faith a bit. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh man, I could be a district manager at the Spencer's one day, you know? Mm -hmm. Like oh, I could be man. I could be making some big moves, maybe get a little Fuck, imagine get a how car. many kids out there just do that. So many just go get like you obviously tried so fucking hard mm -hmm. and you're obviously incredibly talented, but there comes a point when you're like, oh, I yeah. could I could make I could make good money, you know, I could get healthcare working in a fucking shop, which isn't you know, there's no there's no shame in that at all, but not at all. There's, I didn't go to school the, though. You know, talent, wasted talent. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Like I didn't go to school and I was like, even from high school, there was things like would have maybe done or whatever, but I always like my plan was like, I want to try at least try. Like I can always maybe try school later, but uh, I feel like if I'm going to get something going, I want to find people now. I want to make this happen. Mm. And uh, yeah, it took a long time, worked in between. And it just, yeah, it seemed like for a minute there, it just was not going to happen. Like, you know, like it was going to happen for other people. And I was uh, happy about that. But I was like, I think I just need to like transition and, and, and pivot and just go to like maybe maybe try to get promoted here. Go go do school for something. Mm. I don't know. And then all of a sudden there's you know, a rumbling, I guess, of like, oh, like we might need somebody. And I was like, oh, OK. And then it all kind of just changed there. I'm just like, all right, well, I'm going to be on deck. So <laughs> and I think very shortly after that, it was kind of just like, oh, you're in the band. I was like, oh, yeah, I, you know, we had a band meeting about the vocalist thing. Um, and I was just like, I need someone that can do highs, mids, lows and sing. I only know one guy. This is the only option. Um, so pretty much, yeah, the second we like made it, thumbs up with the, the old vocalist that we would part ways. Did that go that well? It seemed to go well. Um, nothing's ever perfect, but um, made that move and never looked back. It's definitely the right move for everyone. Fuck yeah. And uh, there is a photo. Like, so did the... I mean, I'm going to put the photo up. There's a photo of you. I, I don't know if it's any of you of like... I hope it's the one I'm thinking of. <laughs> oh, it where definitely it's is. None of, but not a single one is us. It's like the OG lineup. Mm -hmm. It's not even that. It's not even that. It's not even that. We're if gonna it's play, the photo it's gonna I'm thinking of... It's going to be here right now. I can't show you it right now. <laughs> he looked for it. Does it say new <laughs> album? If it says new album, Life Lost, coming out whatever year, then it's the photo I'm thinking Simon, of. Simon, is it the photo? Oh, no. This is like... This is probably before your time now. It's, de oh, it's definitely before everyone's time. It's like children. There's no way for... I will say, if, I think it, if it's the song children, kick one... If it's children, then it's not even... It's just a different currents altogether. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah. So... Yeah, that's just matter. not... I'm not going to just put pictures of kids on the podcast. So. <laughs> well, if Sorry, if you're watching this and the picture didn't appear. And also, <laughs> there there's more than one band called Currents in the history. Oh, of, really? I mean, uh, yeah. Not anymore. Not for 10 years, but Did 10 years ago. Did you used to have ago. a V? Did you ever do the V? The V. Current. So. Current. No. no. Nah. No. No, no slash. But you were like, you you guys were big in V era. Good for you for not having a V. Well, we were uh plural noun era, you know. Oh yeah. yeah. But then there was plural noun V instead of a Yeah. Mm. I, I no, because it, it's a V instead of an A, isn't it? That's why. Otherwise you'd be currents yeah. as in no. like fucking raisins. Architects <laughs> and us are kind of keeping the plural noun 
You have a tour with him? Nah. Not yet. We'd love to, though. That's a fucking We're good tour. We're both very big fans, yeah. Mm. Like, that's a... That, why hasn't that happened? That's such a great tour. Eh. Guys. Yeah. Well, why isn't Circumstantial, that you, I would you say. You tell him, yeah. I can't. I will fucking tell him. Yeah. Um, the, did, the, did the sound of the band change when you joined? Because... That's a bit. Yeah, because the vocalist we had wasn't singing. Right, okay. And I, and I was like... Guys, we need some singing. Fucking big brain. We need. He's right. He's right. Because I'll be honest with you, I heard Currents when Currents was coming up, and mm. I went, oh, "That's not for me." And then I took that with me for about eight, no, maybe for about seven years. And then I heard maybe the record before this one. I can't remember what it's called. Sorry. Ah, uh, the way it ends. Right, and I was yeah. like, "This is fucking sick." Where's this band been? Yeah. Then I went back to the old stuff, and I was like, "No, nah, I didn't like that." Um, but even then, that's like, that's quite a while into your tenure. Yes. Is that just me being fucking old or did you get better? Well, <laughs> I guess the initial uh, influences once one's life lost was a thing. If I, like, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was more like Viljarda, Humanity's Last Breath. Um, it yeah, was I like in just, the fall time. I would just you know? make a song and I'm like, oh, this is going to be the North Lane song. This is going to be the Napoleon song, if you know Napoleon. Yeah. Mm. Um, this is going to be the Within the Ruins song. And they're just a bunch of obscure bands that only scream but still had like tech guitar. Yeah. And at what point did you str- streamline it? Is that is this you again? Big, yeah. big brain decision. Yeah. I mean, it's it's been a constant process, but. You know, the the old vocalist was very into, they're called, they were called villains, but they were also called Youth Forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're they're like, kind of like sworn in, I guess. So there's a little bit of that in my ear. Then when he mm. left the drummers, like, oh, I love Ghosts Inside and Volumes. And so there's more of like that, that punk drum yeah. type of stuff happening early on. And then when... That influence was kind of not in the band anymore. It was more, all right, all right well, what do, what do we want to do? And it's like, definitely try to do something fresh. Um, and I would kind of observe, you know, I got more interested in business a little bit and see, like, how are the bands that are, like, all tech guitar, all screaming mm. doing, and then how are these other bands doing? And what of that stuff that is not the tech band stuff doing that I actually like that I, cause i I feel like you only sell out if you're doing stuff you don't want to be doing. Yeah. So like, it's kind of a filter. It's like, what do I want to be doing and what actually has potential to do something? And so, what can I bring to the table to improve or exactly. alter the sound of the exactly. bands that are already doing good? That, cause there's so many bands that come out in metalcore when it's just like, well, it's just architects again. Like, I'm not going to name any of them, but there are some. Yeah. Well, and that's I'm just like, I'm good. That's like, the thing is like when people are like, oh, I want to combine this band and this band and it's going to be our band. I'm like, right. no, I don't want to think like that. Like I think like, for example, Architects and Wing the Horizon are great bands and I definitely appreciate and respect what they're doing and listen to it a lot. There's still a whole other sect of bands that I really like. Yeah. And, you know, um, and familiar with and enter my brain and find its way out, you know? Yeah. Do you ever accidentally steal a riff and don't realize till it's too late? So... Come on, this is a confession booth. Not that I can think of, but there is a riff that we haven't put out yet that is like note for note, a wage war breakdown. Because, you right. know, there's only well, so many breakdown well, patterns it's, you can make. Well, then but. it's an architect's breakdown, so. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> oh, man. but now that I notice, I'm uh, like. No oh, no fucking beef, but they accidentally stole Doomsday, didn't they? And I'm, that's why I'm saying accident. I feel like it always happens. Like, you're, you're like, not always, but eventually you're going to put something out and then you're going to, like, be just chilling and then you're going to, something's going to come up on your shuffle and you're going to be like, oh, no. Mm. And you realize and you're yeah. like, oh. No, uh, so it almost happened, but I caught it, and I'm glad I caught it. It's the one that goes, bang in it, bang in it, bang in it, dan, 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 dan. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I think it's called Circle the Drain. Um, but I caught it, and I'm going to change it. And but you'll never know. If it's literally that, though, dan, 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 like, 
fuck me there is a real finite amount of those you can possibly have like yeah but they had like a little background percussion sample did you that have was that awesome. as well did you have that yeah. it wasn't exact it was so similar it's like <sighs> it's just and it's, it's not malicious it's just in your brain so when yeah. you're writing this is writing itself that's because it already exists <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> but we we had that in my old death metal band um you know that band textures yes you know the song it's called laments of an icarus the album came out and it's exactly the same riff it is literally and it's such a specifically noticeable like weird straight to triplet feel uh that it's just it's after it came out and i was listening to textures and i was like oh no like literally what you were saying i was like oh no we've done it but in metal it's it's like it's not even as hard as what's the phrase like give an infinite amount of monkeys an infinite amount of typewriters and they'll type the works of Shakespeare no give like seven monkeys <laughs> a guitar and in like seven years you're gonna get every metalcore riff ever made it's a hive yeah. mind of sorts I feel like yeah everybody's got different influences but a lot of people will be on the same wave I feel like yeah you know and they don't really mean to be but like everybody's kind of like following the same kind of you know what i mean like yeah. everyone's got everybody's got like a little bit of a different flavor but like at the core there are like a lot of similarities and that's just you you can't say that that's not true and that's the one thing that was one of the biggest clicks in music writing i've ever thought of is like music new music is always um something you haven't heard before is two things combined together that haven't been combined before but in the beginning of like black sabbath and Iron Maiden or Metallica or stuff like that, that it hasn't been heard before. It was a technological thing. Like the amp didn't exist yet. Oh, so I'm really? Like, yeah. I mean, amps only have existed for so many times. The biggest, then there's a new instrument. The biggest brain. So I'm like, is there an advancement in a technology that hasn't, you know, existed yet that's continuing in its synthesizers? Like, there can always be more sound design that you can do. Yeah. So I'm like, guitar-based drums is always going to be guitar-based drums. But what else musically can you do outside of that? Is and this what you're thinking now, or is this where, this is where you where started thinking? I I started doing it more, and a lot on that album you started, like, the way it mm -hmm. ends. Is that was the main difference, is I'm like... Uh, maybe that's why, then, because it was yeah, like you brought in something... because guitar-based drums is always there, but then you sound like... It's easier to sound like everyone else doing guitar bass drums. And if you're really competent at it, like it's quote unquote good, but yeah. it doesn't scratch that bit in my brain so, and goes, ooh, I've not heard that. So how do you mm. differentiate is with a synth, you can just create potentially infinite sounds. Is that when you brought synths in, that album? Yeah, we will we'll sometimes have it in certain songs and certain parts, maybe on older stuff, but as far as like, Almost every song has it somewhere. That's definitely it. Then, because yeah. I'm mm -hmm. I've, when I had North Lane in here, when I had every like everyone that comes on, bring me uh, even Architects. The minute a band adds synth, clever sound design, maybe even get someone else in to help yeah. with it. I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm fucking on board. Yeah, and you know, touring with North Lane, I definitely observed that and appreciated that more. And even being as an ocean who we have out now, we toured with them five or six years ago and they have like a sub bass they have in their tracks in certain parts More. so if you don't want your bass player playing but you still want a little fill out yeah. there's like a, a sub bass happening what literally just like a mm, yeah exactly but man. you can make notes it can still play notes so oh, i love all that shit when yeah. i'm like when i'm at home if i'm at the gym i'm listening to heavy music i listen to the latest current album all the fucking time in the gym nice. it's great it's Hell fucking yeah. great um but like if i'm just listening to music i'm i'm listening to a movie score that's literally it mm -hmm. i only ever listen to like sound design pretty much yeah so when a band brings that stuff in is that you you programming that for currents yeah i have ended up doing all of it i you know toy with the idea of like oh what if we did bring in jonathan since he's so smart at it at and he's got point. those real synths now yeah isn't he? oh yeah like jonathan knows is like 10 steps ahead of everyone. He knows exactly what he's doing. But I've gotten by and no one's ever been like, you know, Chris, this could sound a lot better. So 
I haven't really been pushed to outsource that stuff yet. It's always kind of done what it needs to do. We're, we're doing it as well. Sorry to make yeah. it about me. But uh, last Stray album, we started doing it more and Will Putney just did it for us. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, like my favorite band band of all time is Nine Inch Nails and it's, you know, it's fucking mostly synths. Mm-hmm. So last record, we put a lot more synths in. And then when you bring that in live, like you said, it just gives you a whole nother experience mm-hmm. because you can add all these other things in. And then this next record that we're going to write in like a couple of weeks, what we want to do is give it to Chris from Under Oath and have him do some fucking magic mm-hmm. on that. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm tempted to get... What What are you using for your synths? The program I use the most is called Serum. Um, I'm going to have to pick your brains about this yeah. because I really want to get into it. Yeah, there's other ones that I haven't tried called Omnisphere. That's Inspire. the one that other people told me. Yeah, that. a lot of people use that. I haven't tried those yet, but Serum is kind of the one I'm using a lot. And another thing I do a lot is, uh, and, you know, Northland Architects did this way before I did, but they'll, like, put a guitar and they'll add a bunch of uh, reverb on it and stick that in the back. And it's kind of like a synth, but it's a guitar. So, yeah, but I would say Serum. And I'm always trying to, like, find more that are cool, but so far Serum is... Someone Doing great. Someone I know, and I'm not going to tell you who it is, uh, recently got a break on a movie. I'm not even going to say what movie it is, right? And they told me the other day in confidence that they got the gig for it. They got like a, you know, like a test. You do a test for this scene. Um, and they literally hit one button on Omnisphere. But they, they spent a good amount of time picking the synth and adjusting it and then it was just like so not an acting role but like a music role sorry yeah music okay. role um it was literally like they they made a synth and it was one button and then they sent it and then they got the gig from it nice. that's why i was like that's why i was like i need this fucking on this shit yeah mm. not for that but i just want to put cool shit. no but i mean i'm not a synth genius at all a lot of the stuff is presets that just get tweaked a tiny bit in mixing but there's a cool guy. Yeah, I just go through and I'm like, oh, this would be good here. You already got the song up at that point, and then you were just like, Beep. no, brr, no, wow, yes, that one. Yeah, sometimes the synth comes first, sometimes it comes after, but yeah, this, you know. Do you do it on an actual? Your piano roll, man. I type everything in with a mouse. Yeah. Biggest fucking brain going. <laughs> yeah. Fucking look at that. Tetris yeah, brain. and piano is my first instrument. Like I did play piano when I was six. I just, I think mentally, I'm like, ah, it takes up too much space on my desk, and that's why I've I been typing. Got one. Yeah, but I've I been typing it in forever. So, so your music, yeah, obviously I know this from your music, but your music theory is fucking. It's on it's point. decent. I'm not like a genius at that either, but I have like a pretty good base knowledge about it. See, like I, I know keys. And I stuff. had to do it. I had to do. We we got the thing like grade one to eight in music in in the uk and i i did a degree in music but i majored in drums but in order to get the degree you need a grade five out of eight like theory knowledge so i learned it all and then i fucking forgot it and now i literally oh, yeah. don't fucking know i'm like and someone's like oh it's in this key and i'm like i don't know what you mean anymore. Mm, yeah for some reference when i was in college i did like two the two, you know, music theory one and two as kind of like easy A's, it was like effortless to kind of just get a hundred in both those classes. But if I had made it to the third class, then I would have had to start learning and thinking about stuff I didn't know, if that is any reference. Before this is literally just me asking you questions that I want to know and we need to make it questions that other people want to know. If I wanted to learn that again, how do I start? The, the funny thing I tell people Sometimes I'm just like, oh, go on YouTube. There's everything there. But it's too much. But specifically, Mm. there's a Wikipedia page about modes. um, And it tells you in this mode, there's like this, like, you know, half steps and whole steps. Yes. And just like this mode is this combination of half steps and whole steps. And then this is how you find that. And then you go to harmonic minor, you like raise this one. 
and then it gives you that and interval. It's all there in writing, and it's not some annoying guy. Like, yeah. Hey guys, welcome in. Yeah. Today we're going to go straight in on blah, blah blah. There's too much on yeah. YouTube now. The yeah, the Wikipedia page for musical modes is like earlier on. If I would forget something, I'd refer to that to remember. Um, That's fucking cool. But I just kind of have it now. I'm like, I'm always writing in minor or Phrygian or. So the only one, the only, literally the only scale i can remember is c minor like i can do fucking i could do everything yeah i can do everything in c minor but i haven't actually sat at a computer and been like let me try and mess with some simps in it yeah well the cool thing is too that i started doing in logic the dom using is um you can highlight everything and transpose it <gasps> so sometimes if i'm like doing a mix and the band sends me their MIDI or audio in the completely wrong key as something else. I'm like, hey, did you not notice? And they're like, oh, sorry. And I just highlight, drag down, and it's done. Wow. So if you I, I have use everything. Logic. I use Logic. Yeah, if you make a song in C minor and you're like, oh, let me hear in this in, in a different key, you highlight all your audio and MIDI, and you just drag up the transpose. And the audio can start to sound a little weird at a point, but the MIDI will sound perfect. Wow, that's fucking the biggest brain. Just the biggest brain. <laughs> I'm fucking stoked on that. I'm going to do it. So, we've got another caller. We do, yeah. A lovely I've... little northern voice. Where are you from, <laughs> Simon? Tell everyone where you're from. <laughs> I'm from a shithole near Middlesbrough. Near Middlesbrough. What does that make you then? Because you're not a Geordie, but you're next to Geordies. We're technically smoggies. Smoggies? Yeah. Cause Sounds like we... a slur. It kind of does, yeah. <laughs> no, we're like so close to like industry and stuff like that. We're so close to our brothers and sisters. Um, <laughs> really is. Give us a caller. Okay, this might be a really stupid question, um, but is there any particular songs that, you know, after it being released that you wish you could have done differently or implemented specific changes? And if that is the case... When performing it live, would you want to do those changes so that you can enjoy it more when you play it? Or would you be quite strict in playing it in the way it was released? Um, I hope that's a good question. Have a good show in Glasgow. Scott, Bye. Scottish, I recognise that voice. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Yeah. Yeah. Great yeah, question. Do it more job can, for me. Thanks, Kira. Yeah, you can hit that first if you want. Okay, so I feel like I know what your answer is going to be, okay. but I just thought of one kind of toward the tail end of the question where playing it live, because I think the one you're going to talk about, we haven't played live, but um, like a good example is uh, that song we were talking about before, Never There, where it's like, you know the the album opener yeah uh it's basically just like a like a scream diary entry right and uh there's this line where it's like drink till i can't blink and then i'm like in my head like hindsight i'm like that doesn't make sense there has to have been like a better but word it's on record it's on record it is blink. on record blink <laughs> yes and every time i hear it i just go oh my yeah, god yeah respectfully man. that sucks. oh my god man. yeah straight up just dumb and uh yeah, sorry to anybody that likes that song but then it dawned on me oh my god the word is think it's think wow it, 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 just so like just so you like you know this is just how it goes uh but yeah and so live i will say think because that is the word so that is now canon what's the song in the record uh it's called never there right that's fucking great and as far as my stance on it is i would love to change like the entire first record uh we did um <laughs> But, like, I'm sure every song I could make. Which you wrote cooler. as well, though. What? The entire first record that you wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I don't want to because every time a band has done that, um, not not that this wasn't good for their bands, but specifically, like, Born of Osiris redid their new Rain EP. No, I need that dog shit kick drum. We were talking yeah, about that the other day. I love that original EP so love much. That EP. And any change to it that was made... I was like, ah, I liked it how it was, even though the production I'm sure is like better, but like he was doing like more lows on the vocals and he stopped yeah. doing those. I'm like, oh, I loved his lows. Yeah. And then a day to remember we did um, 
a few songs from their first record as bonus tracks on their second record, and they're like better, but like I'm like, oh, they were fine yeah, the way they, they were. It fucks with the nostalgia. So mm-hmm. If as a fan of music, I wouldn't. I know if I did changes a fan would be like oh i liked it how it was so i don't think i would um and same with live is like even if i think we could play it different live usually uh wouldn't maybe something subtle i would do live like if our drummer wanted to change drum fills to better drum fills i'm cool with that are you actually cool with that though i i my experience guitarists are never cool with that as long as I like them, like... Is he a bit of a... Is there a bit of a regime? I th- I'm not saying there is, but like... No. Every virtuoso, genius, big brain guitarist I know, they have a dark side. And it is... Yeah, no. It's if he's, and if kick he's drum not... Patterns. The kick drum patterns, yes. You gotta hit the kick drum patterns. But, um... How many drummers did you go through before you got one that did everything you wanted? Currents only had one, one drummer before this guy. Really? Um, mm-hmm. He was the founder. Matty boy smashing the, it. Oh he's yeah. He's smashing it. He uh he's a robot. Like Fuck yeah. And he works hard. He he's always warming up every day. I mean those pat you've got so many hurters in your yeah. breakdowns. And I listen to it and I go, I fucking P B in the gym. I'm fucking PRing, but at the same time I'm going, Fuck yeah. that. No, he cares a lot about being a robot and if he ever misses a single hit, he feels like shit and it's like, ah, oh, so nice. Yeah. Job. Yeah, he's he's a perfectionist and and yeah, in his first audition video, he hit all the kick patterns exactly right. And you were and like, like, that's my guy. That's my guy, yeah. But you mm-hmm. said that you would change the whole first album. Was that just like a diss on the whole first album? Or you would change, that as in you would rewrite it completely? Or or did you, did you mean production? The per, the mix actually did get redone. And I do oh, okay. I do really like the mix on it. I think it holds up against any of our other mixes. What did you do? Did you do a re-release? Or did you do a subtle just fucking... Re- no one re-upload. has ever heard the original. Oh, like the really? original never mm-hmm. came out. Um, oh, that's that's fucking. Smart. But there is a there is a different mix of it. I got a few like records that got redone, and I was gutted. Um, the nothing remaster, mm-hmm. no remix, the Meshuggah nothing. Like, I get it. The guitars sound better because I think it was they tracked it on seven strings. It was before eight strings even existed, mm-hmm. and they retracked it with eight strings. But it was when they were they were in their whole like drum kit from hell tune track era, yep. and I don't know this for a fact, but I'm fairly sure they they the remix is actually programmed drums. All of the ghost notes are gone. Yeah, like it's not. I'm pretty sure even Obzen is programmed drums. Really? Yeah, I heard a uh, a a l say that on a podcast years ago. Um, really? Yeah. So I'm like, and you'd think Obzin's so organic yeah, and real. And legi- is, it's a legit metal record. So there's like, there's no they, way it would be programmed. Did they mean like quantized? No, I, I'm I, sure I saw photos of them tracking, but then again, you could always just put a photo up of a drum kit and go, in the studio. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I wasn't there, so, but I, I definitely heard that it was programmed well, he, um, I mean the guy can fucking play it oh I hope someone corrects me if I'm wrong I mean I, I am just curious I, I just googled it um, Catch 33 was programmed yeah I know that much but Obson wasn't but they did use drum kit from hell as the samples but I wonder if it was mm. completely replaced yeah which I think nothing was completely mm-hmm. replaced um, which is infuriating because they did lose all the ghost notes uh, what else was I didn't like the re... There's some that have been done good. No, I'll tell you what one I hated the fucking most. You'll, you must agree with me here. Dimmu Borgir, Puritanical I just remix. listened to it for the first time the other day. So actually, Nuclear Blast sent me and Ben a, a vinyl of it. Uh, shout out. Nuclear That's Blast. fucking cool. Yeah. Um, however, I don't have a vinyl player though, so I listen on Spotify. However, <laughs> what are you going to tell me? I, I can't do it, bro. I need those fucking drums. I didn't listen to it consistently enough to like miss how it sounded before. Cause it's not like they retract. Cause a data member and, um, full Born of Stars were like retract, retracts yeah. and this was just a remix. Yeah. And I never did an AB, but I was like, Oh, I still like the album. Do them back to back. And cause I listened to it like once every two years or something. So I don't, it wasn't like a crazy enough difference to me where I was like, oh, they ruined it. 
Yeah, it was. Let me tell you, they did. Okay. And, uh, yeah. They ruined it. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't mind it, but if I heard the old one next to it, I'm like, oh yeah, I missed that. But they they sub they they they're like objectively they made it better because it's like the drums sound real now, but it's like no, I don't want that. I yeah. want the, the drums are loosey goosey, but then have that you know early two thousands thing where the I just drums- remember when listening to the remix, the toms sounded. Like more reverby than any Tom I've ever heard in my life. I think it's because they just used real, real drums instead of mm-hmm. like DM5 samples. Yeah. But Timmy Borgia to me is those DM5 samples. Mm-hmm. I listen to just all that Nick, Nick Barker era. I listen to Cradle of Filth, Nymphetamine today as well in the yeah. gym. Just give me a keyboard drums. However, if a band came out right now with that, everyone would be like, oh, that fucking sucks. I want to hear Lorna Shaw with like, terrible drum samples it would be so sick do you know what i mean like, <laughs> i mean they're they are that anyway but like but not they're like good samples give me shit samples mm-hmm. we've got a tv show in the uk shout out the uk called eastenders right and it's like a pro it's a soap opera and it's like all right geez how are you doing oh no you'll never guess who's just done in the pub right it's prop it's prop and then at the end right there's like a you know there's like a sting at the end of soap operas how you know the episode has ended mm. the eastenders one is just drums and it's just they've never changed it never remixed it it's just 80s synth drum samples and it goes do 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 ba, 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 ba. and it's dimmy borgia drum samples I want, See. I want those. I mean, it's not actually, but it probably is. I want those on. I want EastEnders drums on Lorna Shaw, three hundred BPM EastEnders drums. Simon, is there a way you can bring up the EastEnders drum noise for our guests here so Fuck I can explain? Yeah. I wonder if we get DMCA for it. Oh yeah, dude! That reverb at the yeah. end. Yes. Oh. so sick. I've never heard it through good. I've never heard it through the uh, Shaw headphones I'm using, which I should know the fucking name of them because they gave me some money to tell you the name mm. of them. Uh, they're really good, though. Something amb- Ambiotic 5. Something no, that's, a, that's a metal band. Anyway, good podcaster. Amity Tour. Yes. When is it? Who's on it? What are you looking forward to? We are going to be going on tour with the Amity Affliction. They're playing Let the Ocean Take Me in Fall. In We've full. got In Fall. It's a sing fest. Yeah. Well, I think it just says celebrating the the record. So I don't know. We'll see. Probably. Yeah. I would have to assume. Um, Dying Wish and Mugshot will also be on the tour. That's a fucking cool tour. Yeah. I'm excited for Mugshot because I didn't know much about them until we found out we were going to be touring together. And then I was like, oh, cool. Let me check them out. I'm like, they're heavy. They're cool. And I'm stoked on Dying Wish because... Love Dying Wish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out Dying Wish. Mm. That's a fucking great tour. Also, though, for Amity, it's very heavy. Yes. Heavy tour. And yes. Then, and they're, let the, let the Ocean Take Me. What year was that? That was 10 years ago, isn't it? Yeah. So, mm. I mean, that was still when they were a little bit heavy. I mean, they're still heavy-ish. But do you yeah, know those guys? Heavy. Nah, I never met them. Fucking really nice guys. Nice. Great to tour with. Dying, but that's a fucking banger. Mm-hmm. And it goes... Till June. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you'll Six be week on, tour. Go and get some fucking tickets. Go and see. That's a, such a good lineup. And that, well, that's States, not Australia. States. What's the venues? You don't have to give me all the venues. Just give me the example yeah. of the size because um, I'm interested. I don't think there would be anything under 1,000. And I think it goes up to like 3,500. So, yeah, like the Detroit one, I think it's like the 3,500. Or yeah. no, sorry, Denver. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, so there's Summit. Like, no, Summit, I think, is only a thousand something. This is the. Fillmore. Is it Fillmore? Yeah, Fillmore. I think it is the yeah. Fillmore. Simon with the fucking. There's a lot of Fillmore's, by the way. So yeah, many you guys Fillmore's. noticed that? Live Nation. Yeah. Mm. See, so yeah, a lot of House of Blue, a lot of Fillmore's, a lot of that type of stuff. Have you done the States tour since they started giving us money? Oh, yes. yeah. We oh, did, yeah. On the Polaris tour, we just did uh, getting. What did you do with the gas cards? We still haven't used them all. Yeah. Yeah. Like that's the that's the like I have a few at my house. I there's, keep not enough sh- sh- there's not enough shells. Yeah, because we're no. like, we want to go to the truck stop where there's actually stuff. We don't want to go to shell. fucking Bucky's, bro. Yeah. Give me a Bucky's yeah. gift voucher. There's not yeah. many Bucky's. If anyone but. doesn't know, and I actually I'm not even gonna 
tell anyone who it is. I had dinner with someone from Live Nation and I asked them flat out, like for anyone who doesn't know, Live Nation got so much heat over the last maybe five years for their merch cuts that they were taking in venues, which they owned in the pandemic. They bought up a lot of small venues that closed in order to then make them Live Nation venues and then to capitalize on the merch right there. So they were naughty, naughty people. And then they completely turned about six months ago where they now said they were going to get, I can't remember what it is. It's, it's like that no merch cut. And yep. then gas vouchers for like, it's like a thousand. 750, 750 gas. Yeah. And then on top of that, like some hats. you're shopping <laughs> a shopping budget. That's, I don't know if it's also 750, but it's close. Um, and it was like super fucking sick. And I literally, I happened to be at dinner for something else. And one of the guys there worked like quite high up at Live Nation. And I flat up asked him to his face. I was like, what's what's happened what you doing he literally said we just we needed to get the artists back on board and i was like well it fucking worked (laughs) yeah coincidentally the uh the first tour that we had a bandwagon so very very helpful i was going to ask when you do these direct supports what's your accommodation because you can't, I assume you can, well, we can't afford a bus on a direct support in the States. So we go bandwagon and it changed my fucking life. Yeah. Like we did. So, so I guess for a little context, right? When we tour, our historically, we have always just traded off driving the van, right? Like it's just 100 miles each for every tour back, you know, from, from New York to California and then back to California and New York again at the end of the tour or whatever, like just, you know, we just split up all the driving. There's nobody that was in the group, at least the like the band uh, that was not driving the van, yeah. you know, we're all, all hands on deck kind of thing. And um, we even did it for the headliner. It was kind of like, you know, we got a driver. Well, we had a driver, we had a driver, but we took yeah. the van, right? Yeah. Because we had, it was, it was just Nolan. Um, and we had, uh, Sarah Hollick who was doing photo and merch. Um, and she had done photo and merch still, you know, we still work together, but, um, yeah, like she's been our person since what, 2019. And, um, yeah, it was really tight knit crew. Uh, we, hotels. Yeah, well, hotels for uh, the driver yeah, yeah. every day. Um, Wait, where did you sleep? Uh, in the we, van. We built out, it's, yeah, so it's an so extended much, high roof, it? so you, you can build six bunks and have a futon. And um, you sound like you love it. <laughs> it was pretty sweet. Oh, what? It was pretty sweet. Yeah. I, I mean, that I sounds slept, better. We used I to sleep in, very the, in good. the seats in the van. I slept very good mm. every night. Yeah, I could never sleep on a seat. Like I just couldn't play. Because yeah. a, a bench is, you know, the width of a van. And if my legs aren't straight or if my legs are hanging, I just can't sleep. Yeah. So I could never have done like a, a regular van tour. I would have been too weak. But a bunk, I can absolutely. I love a bunk. And yeah. then you upgraded to van wagons? Yes. Sorry, yes. You, you were on a roll there and I cut in. Oh, no, totally. Um, But like, yeah, Headliner was the last thing that we did in the van. Um, And then what the next u.s tour after that was the polaris tour right and then that was our first time doing a bandwagon um but yeah it's super sweet big quality of life increase i had a hard time because i slept really pretty good in the van but bandwagon mm, not as good what what bunk are you in okay i think it's my fault because i was like i picked it's like oh maybe i'll go on the highest bunk on the yeah you fucked it yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. absolutely. That's the bounciest bunk around. Yeah, next time, bottom floor. It also depends on the driver, though. We've had some bandwagon drivers that were terrible, and then we had, and we've had two that are real good, mm. and it's less bumpy. Um, what about you? You you in on bandwagon or yeah? It, so many people I speak to are just like, hey, fuck a bandwagon. I no, love being a van because for you know years I did van tours and I would talk to people crew and they're like oh it's like sleeping in a laundry machine and yeah. everyone always complained about it i'm like well you're not in a van so yeah exactly um mm-hmm. they're usually bands that are no it's 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 always the crew it's always like the, this, cr- they're the crew they're not even paying for it they're normally um, on a bus as well so right yeah i i did it um for travel intense first headliner and this one um the driver current scott is amazing his name's zach he plays in the band called bane oh yeah um, i know zach 
He's, oh, he's so, the best. So funny. The like, best. such a fucking funny we, dude. Yeah, we oh, we love, love him. him. We so, we ne- we nearly got him on our last one, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, so we uh, actually cut that out. I don't want anyone stealing him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not telling That's you. It. I think he, he was fucking booked up when we tried to get yeah, him. I, yeah. I only know him from shows. He's never driven on. He's yes, pro rock. Man. But um, yeah, I'm I'm on board with them. I've never, you know, done a bus tour, so I don't know. Well, I guess I we're doing a bus tour now, because the Europe bus is kind of like not. Yeah, if it's any, not to ourselves. If anyone doesn't know, the the whole conversation here, because I forget that people don't know, and I like to educate. Mm. Uh, in Europe, we have laws that mean that we can have double decker tour buses, so you can have all the gear and a lounge and whatever on the bottom, and then up top you can have like three even four bands worth of people sleeping because if you share crew in the states the double decker ones don't exist or they're not allowed to exist so you can only fit maybe i think the biggest bus which is stupidly expensive is like fucking maybe 15 people Mm -hmm. and then your so your options are bandwagon which is what nine nine people nine i think there's a 10 is there not yeah we're because um, the driver has a cabin up front, so they count. Yeah. There. So it's, it, yeah, it's a nine or 10 are the options. But yeah, I'm, I'm completely on board. As long as I have a bunk, whether it be a van or a bandwagon or bus, I always have slept very good. I can only sleep if I'm fucked up, to be yeah. honest with you. I and then the extra I'm... storage <laughs> and fridge are great. Oh, little, yeah, everyone you know, on a bandwagon. It's basically an RV and everyone's got... Uh, full size fridge yep. on tour. Oh yeah, yeah. dude. But Coffee the f- making shit. Living the, room kind of. Uh, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, the funny thing deal. is, as good as the shower is, it actually is good. The water does get hot. We didn't use it once because every venue had a shower that was as good or better, and it's harder to dry off in the bandwagon shower just because so there's four there's, things to put towels not, on. <laughs> there's not a whole lot of ventilation in there. Um, it's enough. Like if you need it, you can definitely shower and it'll be great. You know, you know what's funny with it though? It's like you only get to those venues where you're comfortable backstage, like shower and hang out at the same time that you are the same sort of size to afford a bandwagon. So it's like, yeah, you could accurate. really have done with those when you're playing the tiny venues with no shower, but you ain't got any money to do it. It's like yes. a weird, although... Maybe Live Nation will be changing that with their money. Let's mm. hope they continue to give us. Uh, I'm conscious of time. Um, your two truths and a lie, I assume, was I made a. I auditioned for North Lane. Was that one of them? No. So what was the? So one of them was I'd never been in a band before Currents. Yeah, it was. It was going to be like I was in five bands before Currents. That was the truth, okay. right? Um, I was going to join the Marines instead of okay, so don't trying t- to do don't, music. Don't tell me if this is a lie. Okay. Okay. And, um, Hmm. What was my other one? What was my other one? The other one oh, I had never, I had never, uh, screamed in a band until Currents. I only sang. Oh, so I still don't really know. I only know one of them's true. Um, well, you didn't mention the Marines though. So mm. I'm going to say that one's the lie. Uh, no, actually, you were going to join the Marines. Yeah, but I was I was underage, and uh, like my my dad had gotten burned by the Navy, right? Uh, you know, he wanted to go in and like fix planes, and yeah. they ended up throwing him in the boiler room his whole time, and he spent pretty much the whole time trying to get kicked out. And uh, so when I came to him, being like, oh, I think I'm gonna I want to do it. There was pressure from like recruiters. I had friends that were like you know joining the military and like all that stuff, and um, that was I just thought was like. Well, I don't know what the hell else I'm going to do. You dodged a bullet. Quite, oh, yeah, quite dude. Literally. Yes. And, um, you know, my parents were like, I was underage, right? So they would have to sign off on me doing it. Wait, you can go into the the army at what age if your parents sign um, off on it? Well, so you have to be 18, I think, right, to sign yourself yeah. up. But you can join the, uh, there's something called the delayed entry program, where oh. if you're 17, you can get signed in by your parents to essentially like, kickstart the process oh my god that um, sucks so much <laughs> yes yes and uh 17 bro i was just fucking wanking like don't put a gun in my hand yeah what the hell <laughs> like, do i know dude like and then uh yeah they like grilled the recruiter and you know basically caught him in a couple lies and uh Ooh. yeah and they looked at me and they're like tell me you want to do this and i didn't give him a convincing enough answer like we're not we're not signing his paper good. this guy can go 
you know. Good for you. Good for your parents. Yeah, and W like, parents. We wrote, we wrote a sure. whole fucking song about recruiters. I got, there's some horrible shit about recruiters. Shady, yeah. shady, man. Yeah, they would fucking try and get you in there. Mm -hmm. Give me your tr two truths and a lie that aren't ruined by an excellent conversation. All right, number one. When I go to the UK, Nando's chicken is my absolute favorite thing to eat. Number two, um, I never listened to metal until I played Guitar Hero. And number three, what is it? It's, uh, sorry. What? I have I wrote them down. Um, oh, yeah. I thought that was Simon. You every, sounded almost. Every <laughs> time I ever auditioned for a band, someone else got picked instead of me. Oh. Um, right, what was the second one again? Uh, the second one, I, I never, never played guitar before Guitar Hero. Yeah, never played guitar or listened to metal until playing Guitar Hero. These are good. These are great. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I feel like if you're lying on number one, I'm going to go through them all and then you can tell me. If you're lying at number one, you're, you're fucking up. Like if Nando's isn't your favorite, you're fucking up. I'm sure, I'm sure Nando's is your favorite. So I'm going to say that one's true. I'm going to say I want number two to be true so I can get a story out of it because I don't believe knowing how good you are at guitar, that you wouldn't get picked for anything that you auditioned for. So, which is a lie. So this is something I came to terms with in the last year or two. But I think if chicken is not f fried, breaded, or heavily oh marinated or combined with other <laughs> things in a certain way, I don't think I really like chicken. I think steak... So is what, a so is what, a is a meat that if it has to be as plain as it is, it's much better. So what's your go to in the UK then? I look for any donor kebab place. Oh my good yeah. god. Yeah. It's like you're you you're, are dicing with the devil, my yep. friend. Oh, there's a really fucking good one in Glasgow though. Shawarma King. Yeah. Ooh. I'm in Shawarma King is the fucking one. Because they give you the fries, they give you the sauce, they give you Yeah. And I think it's not a problem with Nando's. I use that because I know you love Nando's, but I think I, Nando's tattoo, bro. I think I've yeah I've come to the conclusion. And chicken is like my favorite pizza topping, but just chicken if it doesn't have like shit done to it, enough shit done to it, I just don't. Maybe think you're I just really... ordering wrong. I don't want to go off on Nando's yeah. for twenty minutes because I do it every yeah. fucking episode. So you didn't play metal guitar until Guitar Hero. Yep. Which one? Guitar Hero two. Guitar Hero three. When was I was song that did 14, it? my brother showed me Guitar Hero 3, and the songs that made me be like, oh, I'm going to start loving metal, start playing guitar. Uh, one by Metallica one was one of the top. Mm, um, fucking. I loved uh, Stricken Disturbed, Kill Switch My Curse, Before I Forget from Slipknot. Um, I mean, they're all fucking bangers. So all what great. were you listening to before that? I didn't. Just nothing. There, there was gaming. the radio, like... Um, so I had I had heard in the end by Lincoln Park because that got played a bunch. Um, but you haven't you didn't play guitar? No, not at all. I played piano and I played cello, but um, yeah, no guitar. That's a fucking cool story. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, my brother showed me Guitar Hero and all the cool bands on it got me because I was I was you know playing music and I listened to the Beatles as well. Like, nice, good for you. A lot of too much be too much Beatles slander these days. Yeah. No, I've always been a fan. Anyone, um, anyone that I know that makes fucking good music and knows their shit, there's at least an insane respect for the Beatles. But when everyone's like, oh, fuck the Beatles, the Beatles are shit. I'm like, what's your favorite band? And they go, I'm not going to fucking say it. <laughs> but they go, mm -hmm, whatever it is. And I'm like, okay, you ever written a song? No, shut the fuck up. Yeah, then. no, a yeah, lot of respect. That's a fact, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, Guitar Hero. Okay, Life and then, changing. so... That means the other one's true as well. Yes. Um, I tried out for Currents and someone else got it named Clark that they already knew at the time. So a year after that. Where's Clark now? Um, well, I haven't exactly, caught up with, exactly, I haven't caught up with him in a while. Um, you proved my point. Carry yeah. on. No, um, no offense, Clark. Yeah. But a year later, a year later, Jeff, the founding drummer, hit me up and said, hey, we need help writing this record. Who else did you audition for that said no? Then? Um, there's a band called The Words We Use. That again, like, I might have even been two years after I auditioned. I did end up joining eventually, but uh, yeah, same thing. They got someone else they already knew. Um, 
One was called Burn Lexington. Band names were just different. Yes, weren't they? Oh, they were just different. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah, yeah. Again, again, I think someone auditioned, auditioned before me, or they already knew him, or something. Um, another guy got in instead, and then there's like a thrash metal band. I don't even remember what they were called, but um, yeah, I didn't get it. And it all worked out. It all worked out. And here we are. Yeah. Uh, I think that's a good place to end it. Yeah. I'm happy that they didn't work out so that this worked out. Yeah, me it, too. And it's very nice to meet you, Brian. And uh, I hope I haven't fucked up your show with your voice. Uh, we are chilling. I'm looking forward to it. I'm coming. Um, thanks, guys. Thank check, you. Check out Currents. Check out Shadow of Intent. Have you got another project? You can, nah, not yet. He's just all in on this one. He's all, all in. in. Um, thanks, Simon. Peace out, everyone.